He's already uh, traveled throughout the Midwest, doing shows throughout Illinois, and uh, he's had a comedy club on State in Madison, and uh, we hear he's been making the rounds in Chicago pretty often lately, and <laughs> that is exactly what we assume. You haven't seen the videos yet, have you? He was, you know, we invited him out to do a very special open mic at uh, in my old apartment before I left. He didn't show up, so we just talked shit about him all night. <laughs> but but truly, he's a, he's a good friend and a very, very talented performer. And they say a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down, so we hope these, uh, these cupcakes will help make Emilio's set all the better. <laughs> Please put your hands together. For the, the byproduct of Fidel Castro and the Ramones, <laughs> Mr. Emilio Amato! <laughs> How's everybody doing tonight? Woo! Yeah! Yeah! I start the show like I always do. Oh, Rick Flair Elbow Drop. Fuck! Yeah! <laughs> All right, I just want to start the show by saying uh, one does not simply jerk off in front of a woman and not come on her face. <laughs> so my name is Emilio Amaro, but uh, most people know me as Sir Comes a lot. As the girl, uh, girls at Bingo Night know me as. <laughs> it's not for a fucked up reason either. I don't fuck them, that's weird. I just jerk off on my bingo card instead of use a bingo marker. See, I have morals. <laughs> so, uh, guys, how many guys are here tonight? Clap. Alright, so uh, how many of you for shits and giggles like to go in public places and uh, tuck your dick in and do the Buffalo Bill dance? <laughs> because of my actions, I'm kind of the reason why no kids go to McDonald's for their birthday parties anymore. <laughs> Apparently, going there and tucking your dick in and dress up as a hamburger and walking up to a five-year-old and saying, would you fuck me? I'd fuck me. I'd fuck me hard. It's very inappropriate, according to the parents. I didn't do that in the kids' faces, I swear. Only twice. Only twice. It doesn't count. They were like, it was like their 18th birthday, so I was like, it was okay. They're legal. They can get cum on their face. Anyways, you know, I just love stand-up comedy so much, because it's just such a pure way to feel good. You know, there's no addiction in stand-up comedy. Nobody ever took a Dane Cook album and burned it inside of a spoon and injected it in their veins like they're backstage at an Alice in Chains concert. <laughs> but I would recommend burning Dane Cook albums. You know, fuck them. <laughs> but like I said, zero addiction. It's not like some crackhead is going to walk in front of you and yell, I'll suck your dick for that Jewish joke. <laughs> but if that were the case, I would be telling Jewish jokes until I was an honorary member of the Third Reich. <laughs> mein Kampf, mein Kampf, du hast. <laughs> All the German I know. So I was at Denny's last night, you know, that's kind of what you do at 2 in the morning when you got nothing to do and you're drunk and you puked on yourself. You go to Denny's, they accept it. That's the only place you can walk in with a bunch of puke on their shirt and they go, ah, oh, fuck it, regular. Usually they'll be like, oh, get out of here, you stinky motherfucker. That's what I've learned from uh, any other restaurant, even KFC, even that dirty place. That place smells like dirty pussy and they'll yell at you for having puke on your shirt. I don't get it. But anyways, where was I? Oh yeah, Denny's. I was in there, and these two hookers walked in, and I was like shocked, because I've never seen prostitutes in real life. And I was kind of bummed, because these weren't like the thin, sexy, Richard Gere would pay for me prostitutes. These were like the overweight, fat, Tom Arnold isn't even paying for this prostitute. <laughs> but, you know, I kind of got curious, and I was like, oh, I wonder what these girls do, you know, for guys to pay for it. And, you know, I gave them a tent, and their vagina tasted like a grand slam. The small world after all. <laughs> so uh, here's a little fun activity I was doing the other day. Uh, me and my girlfriend, we were having sex inside of a graveyard. And you know, we were doing all kinds of positions. Um, Dutch rudder, um, missionary, uh, the cosmic sweater. That's when a girl eats a bunch of fruity pebbles and pukes on your penis. That's for another day. I'll explain that one another day. But it was going pretty well, and then the caretaker caught us. And boy was he pissed. He just glared at me as he put her back inside of her casket. <laughs> and you know what that look inside of his eyes said? Even in the afterlife, my wife is a cheating whore. <laughs> and uh, my other girlfriend, the one who's not decaying and has eyeballs, visited uh, from Chicago. And you know, a couple days into it, I could feel she was uh, a little uh, homesick. 
So to make her feel like she was back in Chicago, I put on some Dave Matthews band and shit on her face. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is anybody here a fan of the books If You Give a Mouse a Cookie? <laughs> no, I, I really like those books as a kid, but uh, I just felt like, you know, I kind of outgrew those and I, I've been wondering, like, you know, maybe they should make like some adult theme If You Give a Mouse a Cookie oh, books. Yeah. You know, because that's what I'm looking for. So I've been throwing out some ideas to publishing companies and trying to get my name out there. And here's some of the names I came up with. Um, see what you guys think. Um, if you help the Joker mix prescriptions. <laughs> if you give Charlie Sheen a line of blow. If you give MTV a group of alcoholics from New Jersey. Could be a good one. If you give a fag tickets to Wicked. <laughs> Who knows where that will go. If you give Osama Hussein Jabbar a private jet, who knows? It could end with the Freedom Tower. We don't know. <laughs> it could be like those choose your own adventure books. Maybe the Sears Tower, maybe Freedom Tower. Who knows? If you give Paula Dean a stick of butter, probably diabetes and death. If you give a high schooler a gun and Marilyn Manson album. Does anybody remember 1999? I sure do. Yeah, but you guys. Yeah, that's like NIU every year now. If you give Magic Johnson a gas station condom. AIDS. Latin Latin AIDS. If you give Team t uh, Ted Tebow a life-size blow-up doll, Jesus Christ. If you give Kramer a copy of The Help. Ooh, I don't like that one. And last but not least, if you give Elton John a family of gerbils. Alright, so, um, parts of my show, you know, I like to... Uh, reminisce about my childhood with my brother, Mr. Adam Bush, and uh, he will come up here and we will go through memories of our childhood. God damn you! <laughs> He's just like Walter from the Big Lebowski, I swear to God. It's not the Big uh, did you explain what Odad was to the people? Oh, we're just gonna we're just gonna relive memories of our father, and he was just a great guy, and I, I don't know, I think he was a little misunderstood, but we loved him. Here's some memories. Hey, Emilio, remember the Christmas when we came downstairs and the first gift we opened was Mom's skull in a box, and Dad yelled, "Hey, bitches, I'm like John Doe in seven. <laughs> then pissed himself and passed out. <laughs> oh, Dad. <laughs> I'll never forget the Christmas when Dad shot both of Mom's eyes out with a BB gun and beat her into a coma with a sexy leg lamp oh and shouted, Even my lamp is more attractive than you, you fucking Renee Zellweger lookalike. <laughs> oh, Dad! I like how this, uh, table, the table of potheads over here is going on. Everybody else is like, this is fucked up. <laughs> like, those kids were obviously raped when they were young. <laughs> We were willing. We were willing. After uh, a couple bottles of shops, we were willing. Hey, Emilio, remember that time we went downstairs to watch Ren and Stimpy and Dad had his arms wrapped around Mom's face screaming, Look, I'm Chris Benoit! Now which one of you little faggots wants a cross face? <laughs> oh, Dad! <laughs> remember the Halloween when Dad, when I was like, Dad, I don't know what I want to be for Halloween. So he cut Mom's face off and tied it around my head and told me, Now go be the biggest slut in town. <laughs> oh, Dad! Yeah. I'll never forget during my fifth birthday party, Dad kept stabbing Mom in the stomach and I yelled, Dad, what are you doing? And he says, something I should have done five years ago. Oh, Dad! I'll never forget when Dad would lock Mom in the basement like Sloth from the Goonies and only feed her baby Ruth bars, and every time she ate one, she'd like scream, and I always wondered why. Turns out Dad put razor blades in every bar. Oh, Dad! <laughs> This is going to go on for the rest of the night. Yeah, this is two hours of It really is. I'll never forget what Dad told me before he passed out after drinking two bottles of whiskey mixed with heroin. You can learn anything about the world from the film Sleepaway Camp and your mom blows homeless people at the bus stop. Oh, Dad! I'll never forget how Mom would kiss Dad on the cheek and he would respond by backhand backhanding her on the throat and shouting, You're not a bottle of whiskey, you whore! Oh! Dad! I just want to note, I like this guy's face who just went wow and the disapproving look from the table over here. <laughs> All, everyone. Everyone who's not the pothead table. Okay. I like the pothead table. 
I'll never forget the time Dad lit Mom's head on fire and tied her up to a motorcycle and yelled, Hey, look, the cunt's dressed up as Ghost Rider. Oh, Dad! <laughs> that really isn't kind of funny when I think about it. it she was really in the really hospital for like two years. It's kind of creative, though. It, it was creative. I'll give Dad that one. I'll never forget the time Dad tied Mom naked to a corpse and said, Look, kids, your mom's fucking the mascot from Iron Maiden. Oh, Dad! <laughs> I think Reverend and Ron's the one laughing the most at me. <laughs> so just the other day, I was thinking about the time I brought Dad in for show and tell, and he just showed the teacher his cock and told her if she didn't blow him, she was getting a Colombian necktie. Oh, Dad! <laughs> I like to seem like an asshole. Because you are an asshole. Such a All you do is beat the shit out of children. Whatever. Maybe they should blow me harder. <laughs> Sick, babe. I learned from Dad! <laughs> Alright, two jokes for the rest of the way to do this. I'll never forget the time Dad whipped the, the football at Mom's face and yelled, Look, I'm Tim Tebow and your mother was someone trying to get an abortion. <laughs> oh, Dad! <laughs> one more Oh, Dad joke. Just get to number 10. That's, that's a good one. I'll never forget the time we went to bed early on Christmas Eve, and Dad put Mom's corpse on strings and waved it above our bed and shouted, Oh no, kids, it's the cunt of Christmas past! <laughs> <laughs> Dad! <laughs> One more memory from our old dear Dad. I'll never forget when I was four and I saw Dad stabbing Mom in the eyes, and I believe I was crying. I'm not sure, whatever four-year-olds do when they see their parents getting stabbed. And I asked Dad, why are you stabbing Mom in the eyes? And I'll never forget what he told me. I caught the whore watching Growing Pains again, that look in her eyes clearly stated, I want Kirk Cameron to fuck me with his Bible. Oh, yeah! That is my time. I'm Emilio Morrow, Sir Punzalot, and that is Adam Bush. Keep it going for Emilio and Adam and their, uh, and their very proud father. And, uh, I think just left a little while ago. Yeah, like, man, when, <laughs> when, when I said it was going to be a night of surprises, I didn't realize it would be a surprise for me, too. Who knew we were going to have sketch comedy tonight? Whoa! So there you go. Next, next stop, Broadway. For those gentlemen. Uh, let's hear it again for Emilio. And, uh, and once again, I do want to remind people, we, we, we do have the Nation Cup for a very special headliner. Uh, this gentleman really... Um, Man, man, this guy has so many uh, amazing accomplishments. I'm really, really thankful he was able to uh, squeeze our little show into his, uh, to his very busy schedule. This gentleman goes all over the place. I also want to remind you once again, don't forget, uh, don't forget uh, Poetry Night, which I guess will be next week, won't it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Would you like one? What kind of those? I'll say that. I got an Audi. <laughs> so I definitely want to um, want to emphasize that you guys should come come check out all the events out here, and uh, also 